Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 655. I'm just going to call it 655, it's easier to do it that way. Um, or 655. Sorry, that was in here, let me get it out there. <laughs> welcome to episode 655. The topic today is you stay in bad relationships and here's why. I'm going to break this one down because it's been bugging me for a while and I'm seeing some posts today that just were like, I need to talk about this. So before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what these are about. This, this is my daily talk, by the way, on Facebook Live, and I'll get to that in a second as well. My name is Barry Selby. Ta-da, surprise. I am a best-selling best author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I primarily help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That came up a lot yesterday, actually, in talks with friends. And it's also what inspired these talks I've done every day now for over two years called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And this one's going to be a doozy. Well, maybe. We'll see what happens. I don't have plans. I don't know ahead of time what's going to happen, but I have some ideas. So again, this is episode 655, and the topic today is you stay in bad relationships. Here's why. And I saw a few posts today that sort of pointed to this theme, and I knew I had to talk about it. And... The, the focus I want to put on this is a range or a gamut of toxic, challenging, dysfunctional, limited relationships that are less than what you deserve. Because every one of us, including myself, have been there. Um, I would probably suggest, and I don't have statistics to back it up, but I'd strongly, strongly suggest that nobody actually has been in perfect relationships every single time, meaning that nothing ever went wrong, nothing was traumatic. Because you can speak philosophically and say, well, all relationships are perfect because they teach you something. Yeah, but that can suck. So I'm going to break this down a bit more and give you some thoughts and perspective and maybe even shine some light on what you've been through yourself. And I don't just deliver scare tactics. I'm also going to give you solutions as well. So stay tuned. So first of all, let me just put on the table the fact that many of us tend to stay in relationships we don't want to be in for the wrong reasons. And for some of those reasons, or I should say here are some of the reasons I know of, some of them we think we should stay there because it's the other person we're trying to take care of them and we should suffer for their benefit. That's very screwed up, as you can probably tell by the way I said it. We have a tendency to put other people before ourselves in relationship often because if we think that we should put ourselves first in relationship, we think somehow we're being narcissists or something equally toxic. That's an interesting... Um, tightrope between extremes that people think about and I'm talking about those people who generally are more like empaths or caring people or people who want to be nice and I'm using that term loosely as well there's actually a spectrum within that range on the tightrope to use that term again and a lot of it's become it comes from the point of view is that we want to be looked upon as a nice person we don't want to be viewed we don't want to be viewed as a bad person that's really what it comes down to so if we break out of a relationship if we dump somebody we're the bad person. We'd rather the other person left us because then we wouldn't feel bad about, we wouldn't think we're bad, even though we'd feel bad, if that makes any sense. So that's one reason. Another reason we stay in bad relationships, which is probably one of the more common ones, is we don't think we deserve better. We believe it's the best we can do, we're gonna put up with it, and maybe if we were a better person, we can make this relationship a better experience, and maybe it's on our plate somehow, which is another one of those lies that we tell ourselves because the first one's a lie is just as much as this one's a lie and we are trained by this culture as well as the fact that we are trained by our friends and our environment and our families that we should basically make the best of any relationship we're in well sometimes to make the best of any relationship you're in is to be out of it because staying in that relationship is not good for your health and this is kind of one of these things i'm putting on the table because a lot of people i know I'm not seeing how many because I don't have a count exactly. But a lot of people I know have chosen relationships or have been in relationships and are still in relationships that are not good for their health. Emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually, energetically. That's five. Wow, that's pretty good. Yes, you can say, well, spiritually, this is a learning experience and we can w come grow through some things and become better people. Yes, and. We can learn lessons on this world if you want to speak spir spiritually speaking in let's say easy and challenging that's not a good range to put there's the there's the how do i say this there's the 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm seeing an allergy show up, and then some of them are like, no, I don't want to share that one. This can be really weird. <laughs> Basically, you can learn lessons the easy way or the hard way. I'll put it that way simplistically, because I want to keep it simple in this sense. And for some people, they think, well, the more traumatic I go, the more trauma I go through, the quicker I'll learn to be a better person or something like that. This is for the conscious people out there, and I put that in quotes intentionally. It ain't the way to do it. Relationships don't have to be the workshop where you work out all your issues. Can be, but don't have to. And the challenge is for some people is they don't know there's another way of doing it. Because when, and this is one of the truths, by the way, is that when you're single, generally speaking, your stuff doesn't come up as much as it does when you're in a relationship. It's one of these wonderful things about soulmates, as they talk about in the in vernacular. Soulmates are going to basically, um, well, the one we're putting at soulmates is they don't give you a moment's rest. They will continue to bring our stuff up in your face for you to face, to work through, and to grow through. How nice. If your focus is to be in pain and suffering a lot, that's one option. But I recommend another another approach. Sorry, I'm just showing my shirt. I'm just seeing the wrinkles and want to... Sorry. <laughs> I distract myself in my own video, so excuse me for a second there. On the other hand, being single is a great time to look back at what you've been through in the past and start looking at how you can resolve, um, heal, reframe, unpack, transform old patterns and paradigms you've been in past relationships so you don't keep repeating them. So basically there's pluses and minuses on either side. Yes, being in a new relationship is going to bring up all your stuff. Oh goody. But also being out of a relationship gives you a chance to look back at your past ones a lot more easily. Because one of the things I talked about before a few weeks ago was it's not your new partner's job to help you fix the stuff from your old relationships. I was going to say that's my job. <laughs> in a way, that is my job as a coach is to help you work through those past relationship issues so you don't drag into the next relationship. But I'll get to that in a minute. I'm jumping ahead of myself. <laughs> Interesting that came out that way. But the thing we get into is we think that relationship patterns are only going to be worked out either when we're on our own or in a relationship, internally, like nobody's gonna help us with that. That's what I thought for a long time. And then also went through, I, I, I went through, I participated in many seminars, retreats, trainings, workshops, um, courses and programs, and teachings from different people over the last few decades that have changed who I am to be a much more effective, holistic, healthy, self-supporting type person. And even though I was going through so many transformational pieces of the journey, I still messed up my relationships. Sorry to burst your bubble. There isn't a fix-all that's going to fix everything. I can tell you that now. Having done through, been through such a diverse range of seminars and teachings and trainings over the last, say, three decades, and then some, I learned very clearly that a lot of stuff I had to work on was to actually take what I'd learned and integrate it into myself. Frankly, this is what became my toolkit for my work with my clients. And I know that for all of us, we have our own unique paradigm, our unique journeys, our unique relationship experiences that sometimes we don't think we can resolve with somebody else's help. But as I mentioned in earlier, or I should say I let loose earlier, that isn't the job of your future partner to fix your past relationship woes. And I talked about that about three weeks ago. I did a talk about how your next relationship won't fix your old one. But the things what I did say earlier blurted out is that it is my job. And I'm going to give you some clues, first of all, and then also let you know how you can reach me and find out how to work with me, because frankly, if you're stuck in this place, it doesn't help you to stay there. I can help you get out of that. And I do have some room in my calendar for some new discovery sessions and also for some extra clients. I have some room there, so that's why I'm offering it now. So anyway, so some things to think about for yourself. If you're aware, looking back at your past years, sequences, relationships, and you notice the same experience kept happening, that your partner, even though the face changed, the patterns didn't change, that's a clue. If you're also aware that you're still in a relationship, perhaps, where you are feeling that where it is now is nowhere near as good as it was at the beginning. Like somehow all the juice, the excitement, and the love has gone out of the relationship, now it just sucks. If that's something that you've um, become very aware of, it doesn't make any sense to stay there. Now, if you're in a relationship where you have family, we have kids and you have this sort of stuff going on, it's a different story. And I'm not saying you should walk away from everything. 
But if you're in a relationship or dating somebody where you're both single, there's I mean, sorry, you are both childless and you're in your relationship together just as two adults, staying together for the sake of a relationship that sucks for you isn't a smart move, even though some people do that. And yes, I did. So I know what it feels like to be suffering through a relationship. So I'm not speaking from theory. I'm speaking from a lot of experience and <laughs> my own mistakes. I'm not going to out myself here. Sorry, you can't. You have to talk to me privately about that. But the thing is, if you want to really transform your experience in relationship and have a new paradigm of choosing wisely and from a place of your highest good going forward, then it makes a sm it's a smart choice to do something about it now while you're between relationships or do it after you get out of the relationship that you're in that doesn't work. In my work with my clients, what generally comes up, and there's three main things I focus on with my clients, just to give you a, 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 an overview, is first of all, it's getting clear about where you want to go. Actually, it's not first, that's third. <laughs> I'm out of sequence here. First of all, actually these vie for attention, which one's first, second, and third. So I'm gonna give you all three and you can figure out which comes first, second, and third. Because it depends where my client is. That's the thing with my work. It's never, it's not, it's not um, cookie cutter. It's not scripted. It's very much client based. So in this paradigm, in this choice point, is there's three main areas to focus on if you want to transform your relationship paradigm. First of all, is if you've been carrying around the burden, the pain, the suffering of past relationships, you've got to be willing to forgive yourself. Because 90% of the time, good people, actually, no, 100% of the time, good people judge themselves when they don't do things right or perfectly or better. It's only bad people that don't judge themselves because bad people don't give a flying whatever. They, don't, they just move on. But it's good people that generally suffer from judgment and self-recrimination and self and guilt for feeling that they haven't taken care of themselves they've done the right thing. So the first thing you're going to do is learn how to really forgive yourself, appreciate yourself and love yourself again. That's one of the core parts of my work. Secondly, is as I mentioned earlier, if you look back and see the, the past several relationships with a different face with the same patterns, that's a clue that there's some history there that needs to be undone. So looking back at your past relationships over the last, well, however many you want to look back on, seeing the common thread, the same patterns where each one of the partner, your partners either did or said the same things that you went through again and again and again. Maybe there were different forms of the same pattern. For example, maybe you were in a relationship with, a, with your last relationship where your partner was a workaholic. The one before that, maybe they were a drug addict. I'm being extreme here, by the way. Maybe before that, they were um, addicted to video games. It's that addiction which is the common thread, even though the expression was different each time. But it's the pattern that is the key. And when you understand that the sequence of the pattern is repeated, 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 you'll realize that that's something you have control over. I'm not saying you can fix them, it's not about them. But what you understand and you learn clearly is that if you're seeing the same pattern reoccur in every single relationship you're in, in past sequence, in your past romantic relationships, the clue, big hint, is the one common denominator to all these relationships is you. This is one of the things I had to go for myself was to look back at my past relationships and see what, like, it kept repeating what was going on. Like, well, then what am I bringing to the relationship that's providing that space for that to happen? When you have that understood, which is basically resolving your history, Oftentimes it goes back to a very young age. I've talked about that many times in my broadcast. Once you've got that resolved, you can then heal it, key, and then move forward without that becoming the overriding choice that you make without realizing it. So that's number two. Number three, which I jumped ahead by mistake earlier, is having a clear vision of where you want to go. Most people's vision of relationship is the profiles they scan on their date on the dating app or dating site. Nothing beyond that, which is frankly it's, it's unsurprising that relationships don't work out your way, the way you want. If you're just simply basing your vision of what you want on who you look at on these dating sites or dating apps, you might want to reframe your position. So having a clear intention of where you want to go and a vision and a desire of what you want to have is absolutely fundamentally a key part of the journey too. So I'm going to put a couple of links in the comments to invite you to go further. One of which is actually um, I have a program for the ladies called Attract the Man You Want because that's what it does. So if you've already resolved the first two pieces, you love yourself fully, you've healed the past wounds, you're not judging yourself anymore, you've forgiven yourself, and you, you put the last ones, you put the last relationships away, you won't repeat those anymore, then you can just jump into my Attract the Man You Want program because it will take you to the next step, which is step three. If you've still got some challenges in the first two areas that I mentioned, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me to see if you want to coach together. I'm not going to sell you on anything. 
I'm just going to invite you to have a chat to see if where you are is where, where you can move forward from, if I can help you with that, and if you want to work with me as well. It's a two-way street. So I'll give you those links in the comments as reminders and as suggestions. There's more to this than just doing the work on your own and that you deserve a lot better in relationship if you've been choosing less than ideal relationships in the past. And I want to make the point again clearly because I just said it's an offhand thing. If you've been suffering in past relationships and if you still are suffering in past relationships that don't honor and respect who you are, I want to make it very clear to you, you deserve a whole lot better than that. You deserve the best, in fact. And if you don't have someone cheering for you, I will. <laughs> but cheer for yourself. Love yourself enough to deserve the best because you do deserve the best. And if you're in bad relationships that you, that you, you find painful and suffering, losing out, it's time to make a change for the better. And yes, as Michael Jackson's song said, and I know I'm using Michael Jackson reference here, which is not appropriate in some ways, but you are starting with a man. Actually, no, it's not Michael Jackson. Saida Garrett, I can use that. There's a, mo there's a song that, that she wrote for him called Man in the Mirror. So the woman in the mirror, the person in the mirror, use that as a reference point to know that you can look in your own eyes and, deserve, and respect who you see in the mirror. And, deserve, and that way you deserve the best. Whew, I almost jumped in a pit with that one. Yes. And just by the way, Saida Garrett's a friend of mine and she's the one that wrote the song that he sang. So I can use that one clearly. <laughs> so again, I'll put the links in the comments for a discovery session and also the Track the Man You Want program. Um, and I'll give you quick links where you find the replays for this because if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day on Facebook at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually. Well, I already know Wednesday's going to be a different day. Um, I'll let you know ahead of time if I'm going to move them to watch my Facebook page. But I do this every day as a service to my audience, which is you, to inspire, uplift, and ideally give you some clarity and direction in your own life for love and relationships. So first of all, this is my personal page where I do my broadcast first. So you can find my broadcast every day live at 5 p.m. Pacific time at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to a couple of places. One on my person on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author, and also onto YouTube if you're watching it there. The thing about YouTube is you can't see the comments, so if you're interacting with people, you miss out on that. So Facebook's where you find me more directly. But if you go to my uh, YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, you can su subscribe to that, and there you can find my replays on um, my playlist, which is Messages from the Masculine. So if you have any thoughts or questions about this broadcast, please put them below. And if you want to share with anybody you think should see this, please share it with them, or any groups, places, stuff like that. And um, let's see what else there is for this. Bottom line is this. You deserve healthy relationships in all areas of your life. If you're not getting that, you're not having that, ask yourself why. And then reach out to me. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And I wish you a pleasant evening. Take care. Bye.